but uh, the choice to do this was more of a conscious f conscious decision as well as a conscious effort that i made mm-hmm. uh, so till then i was i would have been just those one of those people doing a corporate job okay. happily just living their life uh, not caring much about what is happening around them i would mm-hmm. have been that person but uh, that changed i changed my flow We all know that the UPSC CSE exam is one which is completely unpredictable and it is this very nature of the exam which makes it competitive and interesting. Hi everyone, welcome to Camomile Tea with Toppers and initiated by An Academy and Fiona. And aaj hum ek aise topper se milne wale hain who faced this unpredictability of the exam and managed to you know achieve an all india rank of 95 in the CSE 2018. Today we are meeting Dhananjay Singh Yadav. Everyone, let's welcome him. Hi Dhananjay, welcome Hello, to the Fiona. show. Hello, Fiona. Very nice to meet you. Great. Uh, same here, actually. Yeah. So uh, you know, the first thing that I actually wanted uh, to know from you because when I got to know that you were coming down, one uh, thing that we, like you know, our team usually we we search about the topper who's coming in and all. So one thing that we found very interesting was uh, although you have such an amazing rank. Your first preference was the IFS. Ah uh, yes. Not the yes. IS which yes. is the general choice I think. Right. Abhi tak hamare yahan jitne bhi toppers aaye I think all of them have put in IS as their first preference. Right. So why this choice? Why th- I think this answer uh, will also resonate with my mother hopefully. Okay. Uh, so um, while growing up actually I was um, I was always interested in world beyond our borders. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this came from the fact that uh, I grew up in Itawa which is a really small town in UP. Okay. And while growing up there I was really more interested in what is happening with the world around me. Okay. Uh but like I, how it happens with most people that they somehow find it that this was their natural calling it wasn't that for me Actually. like if you would ask me in college are you are you trying to get into IFS mm-hmm. the answer would be a hard no okay. uh, and like you how you began because the unpredictability of the exam mm-hmm. i never considered the, the possibility that whether i would want to get into this okay. uh, but once i started working once i uh, learned uh, like what i want out, out of my work mm-hmm. that's when i realized that this is something that i would want to do So this was more of a conscious decision that I made over years that this is what I want to do Achha. and uh, hence I was clearer on this aspect that uh, IAS is not the right job for me it's a it's a great service as 95% of the people getting the top ranks would uh, would, opt would opt for uh, but I realized that it wasn't for me and I would be better suited uh, in an IFS officer kind of a role than I would be in IAS great so um, you know ek cheez hame bataiye dhananjay jaise ki aapne kaha that initially jab uh, you know when you started off uh, like if if someone was uh, would was to ask you initially ki kya aap you know you want to take up the ifs services the civil services so you would have said a no right a so hard us no. time so us time what was your main goal what did you want to achieve uh, actually i I've, i've been the kind of kid who goes with the flow to chote pe bhi matlab my sister used to say my sister is more studious than me uh, so she would study and i would just study i just follow so <laughs> i i was always like going with the flow kind of a person Achha. so uh, and thankfully it always worked out for me like i i didn't i, I was not a science kid i left science after mm-hmm. 10th standard because i saw the stack of books that my sister was studying <laughs> and men realized kya ki ye mere liye nahi hai shayad kyunki main itna nahi padhne wala is is the general uh, assumption i made about myself uh, so i took commerce my father said try to get into this college i'm like yeah sure i'll do that so i've been going with the flow for the long for the longest time i did uh, mm-hmm. and especially in college also like i was just going with the flow it was good college i had a great life uh, people were people usually try to get job out of the college so that's what i did i tried to get a job i got the job and uh, i just went with the flow i just kept going with the flow great uh, and during those times i was uh, more interested in doing an mba i also took cat twice uh, didn't make it if anyone else is listening <laughs> um, but uh, the choice to do this was more of a conscious f conscious decision as well as a conscious effort that i made mm-hmm. uh, so till then i was i would have been just those one of those people doing a corporate job okay. happily just living their life uh, not caring much about what is happening around them i would mm-hmm. have been that person but uh, that changed i changed my flow so ifs ke bare mein agar aap you know if you could share with all aspirants uh, you know what would be the benefits of taking up this uh, as your choice or uh, you know how do you see yourself like you know in the next few years Correct. kya you know what, what you want to achieve with this position right i think number one reason why i i did, i thought that i would want ifs is mm-hmm. because of the scope of work 
uh, it's very uh, clear in the sense that um, unlike say administrative services where it is a wide range of things that you would need to do uh, foreign service is basically uh, expressing india's policy abroad mm -hmm. so whatever the government of india decides that this is what our position is going to be mm -hmm. uh, with respect to bilateral relations or multilateral relations or on important issues such as uh, climate change all of those uh, you not, not only get to uh, define as well as implement it uh, and especially since India is going to be a superpower, I mean, that's what we are hoping for, but we are going to be one of the major superpowers in this century. Uh, that requires a lot more nuanced effort from our side. And True. that's that's the kind of work that I want to work in. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the kind of what, the line of work that I want to be in. And uh, for example, in, in the last 10 years, uh, if, you, if you look at Indo-US nuclear deal, that's something like a major uh, tectonic shift where, uh, if we if we look at it from India's trajectory in mm -hmm. in, in the global world that's mm -hmm. uh, that's that's quite an event mm -hmm. that has changed uh, the way uh, we look at ourselves and how we look at our relations with other countries True. this is the kind of line of work that attracted me in the first place and this is what i hope to do at a smaller and uh, and like going forward at a larger level uh, within the service mm -hmm. um, and versus this of course in ies i mean they have their own set of challenges and their own set of uh, uh, targets that they need to achieve or the kind of change that they can bring uh, in the society mm -hmm. itself uh, but uh, for every aspirant and that's something that i would uh, i'm sure most people get into this thinking um, that they want ies but be very clear with yourself uh, in the first place that is it right for you just because uh, a million people want it doesn't make it the right thing so just be very clear on why you want to do certain things mm -hmm. and uh, what are your reasons for doing so mm -hmm. and obviously whether uh, the kind of work not just five years down the line but not just 10 years down the line but you can do it for 30 35 years uh, mm -hmm. mostly if you ask people why do they want to do this mm -hmm. the normal answer would be collector dm sort of a thing uh -huh. but that gets over that's not uh, the life that that's not a journey that you will have as an ias officer uh -huh. Uh, so be very clear on uh, what the job entails and what all can you do in a job. Like suppose our new aspirants, like complete right. beginners, who are now in CSC, uh, you know, they are trying to prepare for you know actually Correct. clearing the exam. Correct. What would you suggest? Uh, like, if there are some qualities or some pointers which you can say for these kind of people, uh, maybe the IFS would be something which really suit them. Right. So what would be these kind of uh, qualities? I think number one quality that I can think of is you need to be a patient person because unlike civil services in general where um, the effects that of your the, the power that you wield and the tangible results that you can get you can see it very quickly in, in practically every other service but IFS is not going to be like that so the kind of effort you put in is more of a behind the scenes kind of an effort mm -hmm. and it, it might take like years to actually uh, b uh, become fruitful. So you need to be a patient person in general to if you if you want to get into the service because your work is not something that you would see next day that full that fulfillment from work might take years uh, for uh, for uh, for it to actually yield. Uh, so that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, obviously, you need to uh, be the kind of person who's open, who's willing to learn, who's willing to shed their ideas or biases or everything in very quickly because you'll be dealing with people and cultures who you have probably not even heard of before even irrespective of how aware you might be mm -hmm. there might be nuances in the culture there might be uh, nuances in the people that you're dealing with so you need to be an open person uh, you need to adapt very quickly and um, you need to uh, just get into the flow of things very quickly uh, because it's a very dynamic service it's very uh, it, it it might change very fast mm -hmm. Uh, the things might change very fast, so you need to be quite adapt and you could you need to be quite dynamic. Uh, and if you're fulfilling, uh, number one, like I said, uh, mm -hmm. if you're fulfilling uh, the uh, the the role of being like a patient person, uh, and if you are and if you can adapt yourself to the situation, mm -hmm. I think if you have these two qualities, and if then if you want to work in the foreign service, then obviously uh, it'll be a great career choice for uh, for many people. Great. Uh, I think you have a blog that you have already started, right? I have, I have, but it's mostly currently limited to uh, UPSC preparation itself uh -huh. uh, because I I, I self-studied like throughout the journey except for the interviews where I went for the mocks True. and the mocks that I took online. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly other than that, I I simply just uh, studied on my own. So I. I was greatly helped by people who have done this before me. I have, I have read numerous blogs. I've I've seen numerous videos like <laughs> these. So uh, tell me firstly, like exactly, आपने अपनी तैयारी शुरू कब की थी? So uh, I had quit my job uh, in May. Uh, okay. I moved back finally in June 2017. 
and then I spent a month to high and the highs and lows of the internet trying to find out like what I should actually be doing. Achha. I had considered coach taking coaching uh, mm-hmm. since I was living in Noida, not very far from the hub. Okay. So I was not very far. I could have gone there every mm-hmm. single day, but I realized it. And uh, some of my friends had taken coaching before, so they said take it only if you need it. Uh-huh. I mean, you need to decide on your own. All of those sort of things. And I decided on my own finally that I do not need it in general because. I've been very comfortable with reading off the books in general so sure. I don't face that kind of an obstacle where I need someone else to help me understand something that is written I think I'm all, all right on that front okay. so that's what that's what I decided and that's why uh, when people when people ask me also that should mm-hmm. they take coaching that's a very personal uh, choice. thing choice mm-hmm. and also uh, it depends on how what kind of a learner you are mm-hmm. some people learn very like they can learn very quickly when someone else is teaching it to them uh, I, I i can't understand when other people are telling me things okay. uh, so I, I just need to like learn everything on my own uh, so that's where i decided that I, I will not take coaching and i'll just study from home uh, the first major problem was coming up with a schedule because you have like almost a year to go before the prelims you have so much to study and you have if you have no plan then you are lost okay. uh, because you have to wake up every single day and if you're not putting in uh, those minimum number of hours mm-hmm. in the end you're not going to make it because you're not doing the basics right so first of all the goal was that a proper schedule was made that I made it and mm-hmm. I realized that it was very bad so, <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of trial and error involved mm-hmm. in the whole process and Jee. if you can do it right in the beginning of your preparation nothing like it if you to anyone who's uh, sitting down we are, we are in uh, July right now if anyone is preparing for 2020 right now mm-hmm. Even if you are doing it right now, don't be in a hurry to just start with the books, start with schedules, start with tests. Sit down and figure out a plan of action for the next 11 months. Because if you have that, that's half the battle won, right? Not half, one third of the battle won right there. Uh, because if you have a schedule, you know what to do next. Mm-hmm. And that gives a great momentum to your preparation. It gives a great momentum every single day. Like if you get up in the morning, you know what to do. Okay. And if you do not have that, trust me, it's so easy to waste a day. I have wasted many. And uh, for the last three years, it has been consistent. 2017, 2018, even 2019. Uh-huh. Uh, if I were to write 2019 again, I would have, I wouldn't have changed my strategy at all. Uh, not because it worked for me for the first time, mm-hmm. uh, but because it gave me the confidence that this is what is needed. And I think that's that's the one the rest one third part of uh-huh. of the strategy. Once for one third, you need to have a schedule, and uh-huh. one third, you need to have confidence in that schedule that you made. What most people, sab matlab bahut bahut yehi galti hoti hai. कि जैसे ही आप कुछ भी पढ़ना शुरू करते हो मतलब मान लीजिए आपने स्पेक्ट्रम पढ़ाई पढ़ाई शुरू करी कुछ और पांच लोग किसी आप कमेंट में कहीं आप पढ़ लोगे कि नहीं वो इंडिया सिंस इंडिपेंडेंस इंडिया स्ट्रगल फॉर इंडिपेंडेंस बाय बिपिन चंद्रा वो भी लोगों ने पढ़ी है उससे क्वेश्चन आ गया था एंड दैट इज अ डील ब्रेकर मतलब दैट शुड बी अ डील ब्रेकर वंस यू fix a book do not try to change it because the knowledge is not really going to change if you have confidence in your sources and if you have your schedule in place that's two third of the battle won right there great uh, let's get on with the current affairs because i think current affairs ki hi taiyari jo hoti hai is uh, something which is very challenging for many right i for current affairs i was only doing three things mm-hmm. uh, first i was reading the newspaper i was reading it diligently then i was cutting it down and just reading what was important mm-hmm. uh, second i was uh, following uh, daily current affairs on this website called insights on india Mm-hmm. So I was following their current affairs daily, and I was making notes out of their current affairs. I would I would never make the notes out of newspaper because I found it highly inefficient. Uh-huh. It was not the best usage of my time, uh-huh. is what I thought. Mm-hmm. And hence I was making it out of their current affairs. So if their current affairs were like say 100, I would cut it down to 30, 35 percent of it. Okay. And uh, then I would also do the daily quiz that they have on, I think on two websites, on Insights as well as on Forum IES. Okay. Also an academy for a brief period uh, <laughs> in the middle. Uh, so it really helped me uh, come down, c- cut it down to uh, just these three things that I would be doing for current affairs on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Everything else is just extra. So I have a tendency to Google a lot. Like I, I Google anything. I don't want to. Sh- show my search history to anyone uh-huh. because it has some really obscure searches that why were <laughs> you googling this but I have a tendency to google a lot so okay. I end up adding a lot more to my notes which then probably say even what insights would, would offer okay. uh, so I think that would be my X factor I google a lot uh, mm-hmm. not really a thing but uh-huh. <laughs> just wanted to know Dhananjay this exercise that you have told right a lot of our aspirants actually ask that the current affairs or news especially current affairs ki taiyari, like for how long do you need to do before the exam 
Right. I did it for Jan. Uh, so I started in uh, June, July 2017, but then I backtracked and did it from January 2017, and I did it till mid-April. You know, say your current affairs. So we understood. Uh, along with that, your static portions. Uh, from when did you actually end? You know, completing the you know basically right. your uh, actual studying right. and get into the revision mode. So, right. till you know all the aspirants should ideally, according to what you do, uh, did, right. uh, you know, complete their complete syllabus. Uh, so the schedule that I was following actually was finishing uh, the entire syllabus somewhere uh, two months, two months, not even two months. I think sixty or seventy days uh, before the prelims. Mm -hmm. I was not comfortable with that. I I had seen too many people fail prelims uh, mm -hmm. to know that uh, I, if I get stuck at the first stage itself, I mean there's no means, there's not, there's no interview, there's nothing else. If I just don't clear the prelims, mm -hmm. so I decided that I would go all in for prelims. Like in my mind, I was like, my means, dekha jayega. Uh -huh. Means, मतलब prelims हुआ तो means देख लेंगे. Uh -huh. But I need to clear prelims first because if I don't clear prelims, there's nothing else after that. Like my, that's my one year of prep just down the drain. Okay. So almost eight, six, seven, seven or eight months in total is what I took to finish my first entire reading of the whatever the syllabus, syllabus is. Mm -hmm. And in the next three months, which was like March, April, May, three months before the prelims, yeah. I could fit in almost three full revisions. And I mean, when I say full revisions, I mean full revisions. Especially since you did complete self preparation, right? You were right. studying on your own. Right. Log jab usually coaching jaate hai, there's kind of a टाइम टेबल दे हैव सेट कि चलो इतने से इतने हमें कोचिंग में बैठना है फिर इतने वापस आना है तो सिंस आप अब खुद पढ़ रहे थे लाइक यू नो अपनी तैयारी खुद कर रहे थे व्हाट वाज योर लाइक यू नो योर यूजुअल टाइम टेबल डेली टाइम टेबल आई वुड एम फॉर लाइक 8 9 आवर्स इन द बिगिनिंग गेट लाइक 7 8 आवर्स प्रोबब्ली 9 आवर्स आल्सो इन सम इन सम डेज देयर माइट बी वीक्स वेयर आई एम नॉट एट ऑल स्टडीइंग लाइक देयर माइट बी लाइक 4 डेज वेयर 0 आवर्स ऑफ स्टडीज हैव गॉन इन बट इट्स जस्ट दैट यू नीड टू you need to uh, divide your time in the sense that you need also divide your time the time that you will actually be studying and the time that you will not be studying okay uh, so you need to find time in your in your day to do those other things as well because uh -huh. again if you're following that 888 kind of a schedule eight hours studies eight hours doing everything else and eight hours sleeping i think that also will work and probably i tried a nine hour schedule also i don't know like it it just works differently you have to ensure that qualitatively uh you're putting in the hours and not the actual number of hours i'm sure there are enough people who will uh, uh who will drive home the fact that studying 14 hours didn't really yield them result True. so i didn't study 14 hours so i can't say whether it works or not but i'm pretty sure even 14 hours uh, hours work for some people True. so to discredit their number of hours is not something that needs to be done but uh, qualitatively if you're covering your syllabus if you're doing those things uh in that set amount of time i think it it really doesn't matter because people will say they studied 6 hours also and cleared it and i will believe them uh, you know since you mentioned static also ananjay uh, i just want you to uh, you know i'm sure hamare sare aspirants bhi wait kar rahe hoge actually agar aap bata sako ki static ke liye mainly aapne resources kya kya use kiye the so for books i stuck with the ncrts and i stuck with the standard books i did all not all but i did most of the ncrts from 6 to 12 uh -huh. and i did only four standard books like i i know them because that's only four of them that i did uh, the first one was shankar for environment uh, spectrum for uh, modern history uh, Eko, ramesh singh for economy mm -hmm. and uh, one more there's one more <laughs> i'll i'll come back to it uh, and and the ncrts uh, so first thing i i finished the ncrts first because that's how my schedule was the test series that i was following so NC, ncrts i finished first the one thing that i did was i don't know how many people do it i'm sure a lot do Uh, but some don't. Uh, but I made notes out of NCERTs the first time I was reading it. The objective type of questions, especially in prelims, uh, you have like, they can come from any NCERT for that matter. So I to ensure that I would not miss out of any of this pertinent information, I I went through all the NCERTs. I went line by line to ensure that whatever from whatever was uh, important from prelims perspective, I would I would capture. This obviously meant those notes are. I mean, they only make sense to me because only I have the filler paragraphs that in my mind. I like. I know what is be before or after that. So I I made notes in a way that I could easily like look at something uh -huh. and know that this this just this line is important. I take out that line. I already know like what is before and after it. Uh, uh -huh. So when I go back to your go back to those notes, uh -huh. I have a context to it. I just need to remember one particular event that happened. Uh, for standard books, obviously, I had to go through them. uh one by one and i have to go through them multiple times mm -hmm. so as to ensure that i get the entire idea all the concepts are very clear in my mind mm -hmm. uh in this i didn't really decide to make notes because i think those those books are very uh short and concise in general if you look at spectrum if you look at shankar if you, even if you look at lakshmikant was the fourth book <laughs> lakshmikant as well as not amazing but uh these three are quite concise so if you try to make notes out of it 
it, it a it'll take a lot of time to make notes out of those and probably you will be able to cut down maybe 50% of it so i really didn't see the uh, efficiency involved in trying mm -hmm. to cut down these notes to size these books to size so i simply decided to get like five six readings in and have like some uh, question answer format so like there were like important questions that uh, i could get out of these books uh -huh. and just keep referring to them while i was reading it so that i know okay this line is important for example in some uh, state assembly or some uh, parliament of india kind of mm -hmm. from polity like uh -huh. this this line is important so i would just like read it with more emphasis in my mind uh, and then just i'll finish the whole uh, book with with that with this kind of uh, revision itself great so this is what i did mostly uh, and for these static. were the books that you referred these to. were just so for me six all of them were really important <laughs> i i read uh, uh, from 6 to 12th almost uh, for history polity as well as geography i wrote uh, i i read all all the books from like 6 to 12th uh, for uh, science, I did only like six to eight, and maybe a f very few selective chapters from physics, chemistry, and bio. Some they're there. I mean, if you're following a test series, they have specified which chapters that are there. Mm -hmm. I just did those. Uh -huh. And uh, for geography, especially, it was most important because uh, I didn't do it from anywhere else. Uh, like you said, like if I did anything special for uh, for any subject, it, it has to be geography okay. because I was not dependent on any other standard book, just uh -huh. the NCRTs as well as internet. So a lot mm -hmm. of concepts which are tough. For example, climatology, uh, formation of cyclones. So all of those things, uh, mm -hmm. it's really difficult. Like it's it's very it's explained in a very weird way in NCRTs. Okay. People who know who were preparing would know this. The eleventh uh -huh. standard geography is the single most difficult book that you probably will ever encounter like Lakshmi Kant is much easier than the 11th standard geography okay. uh, so for those you, there are a lot of concepts that you need to be very clear so you'll need help a lot from, from internet and that's why I'm pretty sure people would uh, geography must be a popular course on academy as well True. Uh, because it's it's a very it's difficult to understand certain mm -hmm. concepts and yeah. that's why you'll need to depend a lot on the internet for to get those concepts right yeah. and and that's how you'll get the question uh, the answers right in the end so there are certain subjects that you'll have to go a little an extra mile here or there yeah. so uh, just like Dhananjay said uh, you know geography is one uh, subject just may you know difficulty a class 11 book can turn out to become you know really uh, a very challenging task for any of you. So if any of you are having difficulties with either geography or any other uh, subject that you are preparing for, make sure that you go and check out the Unacademy Plus, which is now with the Unacademy Plus subscription, where you get all India's top uh, educators mil jate hai, who are helping you prepare for your exam. And uh, you can actually check all the details in the ad that will follow. And uh, do remember, you can use CTWT ka, uh, code laga sakte ho, and that gives you also a 10% discount on your uh, subscription. So check out the ad. क्या आप यूपीएससी के लिए ज्योग्राफी के टॉपिक्स सिर्फ पढ़ के याद रखने की कोशिश कर रहे हो इससे बेहतर यह नहीं होगा कि आप इन टॉपिक्स को विजुअलाइज करो फिजिकल ज्योग्राफी, इंडियन ज्योग्राफी एंड टोपोग्राफी के मुश्किल से मुश्किल टॉपिक्स को मैं आपके लिए सिंप्लीफाई करूंगा और विजुअलाइज करवा के आपको पढ़ने में हेल्प करूंगा पांच सालों से यूपीएससी के लिए ज्योग्राफी पढ़ाने के बाद आई हैव द एक्सपीरियंस टू टेल यू एग्जैक्टली वॉट द एग्जाम आज फॉर एंड हाउ यू शुड अटेम्प द क्वेश्चन मेरे कोर्सेज से आपके कॉन्सेप्ट क्रिस्टल क्लियर होंगे और एग्जाम के कोई भी क्वेश्चन आप कॉन्फिडेंटली अटैम्प कर पाएंगे मैं हूँ सुदर्शन गुर्जर और मैं अन अकेडमी प्लस पे यू पी एस सी सी एस सी के लिए लाइव पढ़ाता हूँ सो यू नो नेक्स्ट वॉट आई वुड रियली वॉन्ट टू नो इज एक्चुअली ये मुझे बहुत पहले ही पूछ लेना चाहिए था बट वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू नो इज कि आपकी एजुकेशनल बैकग्राउंड थी क्या मे बी इफ यू कैन जस्ट टेल आर एक्सपीरियंस की मे बी टेन ट्वेल्व में आपके क्या स्कूल रहे हैं एंड देन बैचलर्स आई अंडरस्टैंड यू टोन मी बैचलर्स ऑफ कॉमर्स आपने किया था सो मे बी जस्ट यू नो गिविंग एस एन आइडिया अबाउट क्या स्कोर रहे हैं आपके इन ऑल दीज एग्जाम्स ओके Uh, so the thing is, I did my uh, schooling like for the first 14 years of my life. I grew up in this town called Itawa. Uh, it's between Agra and Kanpur. Uh, so that's where I was for like yeah 14 years. I did my eighth standard till there. I um, I am a good student in general. So I've always been fine. Like my parents had no problem with me, so to speak. Okay. Um, 9th, 10th, I moved to Noida uh, mm -hmm. for my 9th and 10th. I I. Passed my 10th standard with like 95, just a shade above 95%. Okay. Uh, the next two years I spent in Bombay. Uh, I, there I was again like 95. <laughs> I got enough marks to get into DU basically. Okay. Uh, so that's where I went finally. My three years I uh, of bachelor's uh, 
in commerce uh -huh. i did from srcc du uh -huh. uh, where again like i that that was the academic low point from my parents perspective because i loved a lot around college is okay. their idea okay uh, but again like i've been academically i've been all right i i'm not a gifted acad like gifted academically or so but i've been able to match my parents expectations which i think is fair enough to okay. so bcom mein aapki kya aayi thi cgpa uh mine was 81.4 around okay. yeah so my whole idea was so i just need to cross 80% at the end of it which i ended up achieving so again <laughs> like i have very short term goals when it comes mm -hmm. to academic uh, achievements so i was able to like course through college mm -hmm. just fine wait so going from college we come to gs papers gs papers mein aapke kya scores the uh my gs paper scores i had a total of 405 Uh, so just like hundred one oh one ninety nine hundred one oh five. These were my four GS four papers. Okay. Ah, uh, in general, if you, if you are to ask me if I excelled at any of the papers or stage, ah, uh, that is not true because I've done fairly average across all the seven uh, papers as well as the interview. Ah, uh, so uh, if you ask me if this one thing that saved me ah uh, and got me the rank that uh, that I did. I don't think I can pinpoint like everything just worked out for me uh, just about fine. Great. Yeah. So GS ki papers bhi since we have mentioned it um, you know uh, you said that the resources that you used were the same right just right. static ke you had mentioned anything uh, extra that you had to do for the mains and also if you could just uh, you know hamare aspirants ko thoda agar aap bata sako ki jo answer writing hoti hai right. uske liye like you know how did you practice and right. uh, if you can share some tips for answer writing. Correct. Right. फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कमिंग टू सिलेबस जो मेंस का सिलेबस है आई थिंक आप अगर आप प्रीलिम के पहले भी अगर उसको देख लें तो बहुत अच्छी बात है बट अगर करंट अफेयर स्टैटिक फॉलो कर रहे हैं और उसके बाद भी आपने कभी जीएस मतलब एक्चुअल जीएस का सिलेबस देखा नहीं है आई थिंक टिल प्रीलिम्स यू कैन स्टिल मैनेज इट बट मीन्स इफ यू गो विदाउट नोइंग एवरी सिंगल सब टॉपिक on the four gs papers then you are making a huge mistake the first thing is that before prelims i knew about the gs papers but right after the point where i knew i was going to clear prelims that's where i finally put up the whole the syllabus on my wall like then i go full front like attack on the main syllabus so then you go point by point and you need to uh, find out which sub topic you might have not covered till now because prelims are uh, to like a large extent maybe like 75 80% they will cover largely the topics mentioned uh, but uh, the mains paper they will try to cover each and every sub topic uh, of uh, of a particular gs paper okay or answer writing ke liye if you remember any uh, you know major things how you practiced your answer yeah. writing and agar uh, kuch tips if you remember sure uh, first of all uh, uh, what i did was i downloaded uh, the topper booklets of uh, last few uh, years toppers uh, uh -huh. anudeep durishetty sir his uh, answer copies were quite in lightning uh, to to quite an extent uh -huh. in uh, giving out a structure and actually breaking one myth that you need to write like really beautiful answers like i was still under the impression that i need to write great answers uh, when it when it comes down to uh, upsc but i think if you're writing fairly average answer uh, you can just simply get away with it because uh, you do not have the time to write beautiful answers there mm -hmm. uh, so for that if you if you just going to write a normal decent average answer which will fetch you the minimum marks which i did i think 100 out of 250 in a gs paper is not a great score mm -hmm. but still worked for me still got me where i am so even if you're writing average answers just ensure that you are finishing the paper because that's that should be your number one priority mm -hmm. and after that obviously just write enough content I, this cannot be uh, overstated I, i'm not saying i wrote generic answers i wrote very specific answers but i still think they were average but you need to ensure that you beautify your content at many levels so you have to quote those reports you have to quote those committees you have to quote the right articles in your opening and in your conclusion all of those things you need to do mm -hmm. uh, and finally of course the structure of your answer i think it's very simple many people have said it before me many people will say it after me introduction body conclusion that's the that's the thing you need to follow you need to write a good 3 4 line Uh, introduction you need to write a fairly good conclusion and in the in the body address each part of the question ensure that you are uh, explaining uh, if, uh, ensure that you are addressing the demand of the question that's one thing that most people miss they think that is is in my notes i read this article this i can remember from that monthly compilation and they'll start putting out those points uh -huh. but read the question uh -huh. because the question might not be from <laughs> from where you read the answer from uh -huh. it will be vastly different so you have to ensure that you read the question properly and you address the demand of the question 
and make the subheadings right in bullet points again fairly <laughs> generic thing that they tell you that's all all that i followed uh -huh. and it worked out for me or essays ke liye anything specific that you would like to share with the aspirants uh -huh. essays uh, like you know especially yeah. like kitna time aap dete the to your right. brainstorming and to your actual answer right Correct. writing the essay Correct. essay is one uh, paper i think uh, especially this year most people will say that this is what kept them from a certain rank or kept them off uh, the list altogether because uh -huh. in essays marks were really um, they were scaled back uh, this year for some reason i still scored decently i think if you ask me like one paper which worked out for me i think it would have to be essay itself okay. uh, in essay again not rocket science nothing in upsc mm -hmm. is going to be rocket science so you just have to uh, you just have to deliver what they are asking you to deliver mm -hmm. and in this you just have to uh, give a well balanced essay the topic is the topics are fairly no, not simple i'm not going to say simple uh -huh. but they are fairly um, they give you enough content to write Uh, like six, seven pages about. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to ensure they are well balanced. Uh, for me, uh, to come up with a well balanced uh, essay, I used to take like fifteen, sixteen minute almost. Mm -hmm. Initially, I would take like half an hour to just uh, brainstorm and put mm -hmm. the points down. Mm -hmm. But eventually, I cut it down to like fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes, I would put to uh, figure out what kind of essay I was going to write. Mm -hmm. And the next one hour, twenty one hour, fifteen minutes, I would deliver uh, that essay uh, for the examiner. Okay. And in this, obviously, just if you if you're starting with an anecdote, you're starting with a quote. You just ensure that it has a proper flow. You are uh, articulating your thoughts properly in each section, uh -huh. and and obviously the most important thing being that you are presenting a rational argument on mm -hmm. both sides because mm -hmm. essay topics are usually open ended. Mm -hmm. So you, there is space for you to uh, bring both sides of the coin, and that's what you should end up doing. and obviously then uh, you you can cover various dimensions examples all of those things yeah. again those things i've a lot of people cover in writing well like for example uh -huh. uh, anudeep sir he had covered a beautiful post on essay which became my starting point uh, for my essay preparation so people have done it i mean you just need to go out and find it and mm -hmm. and just uh, tweak it to match uh, your own strategy great so uh, you know once uh, you know this is all about the mains and the gs papers i want to know uh, your optional was uh, you know again a very popular choice political science political international science, yeah. so thoda light if you can shed on your optional preparation also kya resource use kiya tha aapne okay. and uh, why did you exactly take up that uh, optional okay so uh, i'll just address the latter part first i took the optional because of three things the first was it was giving people top 100 ranks that was my aim so i wanted a optional which was performing and this has this optional has been performing for quite quite a few years now okay. uh, second is the availability of notes study materials everything i wanted something that which i could do on my own possibly i mean okay. even if i was open to coaching but i would rather prefer if the study notes were available okay. and this is the case with psir and third thing interest i actually ha do have a strong interest in international relations so i just had to force myself to like the political science part of it which i okay. did eventually uh so i um in this again i followed a few people who have done who have cleared before me uh i didn't follow their approach 100% uh, -huh. uh but for example um the person who i was semi following uh they had started their optional preparation after prelim so they just like took those 3 4 months and just went at it uh -huh. and just got like 300 i think he got like 300 plus in psir okay. so i was trying to emulate him i was i idolized him okay. and was trying to emulate his strategy of just going at it in the last uh, uh last 3 4 months okay. instead of just like Uh, studying like keeping it along with the gs study before prelims uh -huh. because i was focused on clearing prelims and i thought once i clear prelims i can easily go back to psir okay. uh so for psir i uh, shubhra ranjan madam's notes is what i followed those are quite self contained in themselves and uh, if you can learn to live with it and if you do not uh, feel afraid of the fact that you're not doing anything else again you have to you have to live with the risks that you take if you are ready to live with it uh -huh. uh, then you can simply pre prepare almost like 50 60% of the syllabus from just a note itself but obviously if people are into very deep studies when when it comes to like actually they want to prepare they want to leave no stone unturned uh and if they have the time then obviously there are so many books that people can follow there are again i am not the person who did that so i can only say that this is what, what i did. did uh so i did a combination of madam's notes plus my own uh notes so i ended up making own notes for almost like 35% of the syllabus i made my own notes i googled a lot again like i'm a, i googled a lot so i ended up googling a lot and making up my own notes which i was very comfortable with okay. uh so this like madam's notes along with my own notes i did around uh, i did like six intensive readings and when i say intensive i mean intensive i don't read i was just cursory like just reading through flipping pages yeah. i did six readings of the notes in total uh -huh. i did this between uh, 15th to 20th june till 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 the exam got over 
and in that time obviously you'll have to cram certain concepts you'll have to understand certain concepts and you have to remember a lot for you for you to be able to make interlinkages which can finally help you to deliver the answer and since i was doing that in the in the space of 3 4 months mm -hmm. obviously i was not confident i was not confident to even write an answer on mm -hmm. psir the first answer of psir that i wrote was in the examination hall Okay. And I just had to keep myself like like this is the only thing that I didn't prepared for. Like I was prepared for prelims because I had written mocks. I was prepared for GS because I had written those mocks, but I had not written a single mock for uh, for yes. optional. Mm -hmm. And I do not recommend it to anyone. Uh, if you <laughs> so you should. Yeah. So you should. Yeah. But again, like I'm saying, if you find yourself in the position where you haven't prepared for PSIR till now, yeah. you haven't written an answer, and you have your mains coming up in September this year, it's possible. uh but you'll have to assess your own strengths and weaknesses when it comes to that because what uh, what worked for me might not work for you because there's a 25 years in case of me like 25 years of uh upbringing that i've had like i've had i have a certain world view so i might do things differently uh -huh. which other people who are trying to follow same they might not work for you sure but if you just adjust it to your own what however you are as a person mm -hmm. i think it can be done pretty easy so easily. how many test series would uh, you know you have been given before this exam kitne diye hoge aapne and how often were you giving ah uh, so well, prelims test series uh -huh. i gave which is like 35 tests i was taking them weekly sometimes not in the weekly okay. i think i did like 10 12s in a row in april to catch up that was okay. prelims but for mains uh, i i wrote Uh, five essays okay uh, full fledged so 10 essays in all but five essay papers as well as four uh, three gs papers like so 12 papers in all mm -hmm. uh, for gs okay so not too much if you ask me uh, mm -hmm. but the thing is that i was always comfortable with answer writing in general like i can write bad answers like you tell me right now i'll write a bad answer okay. but uh, during for for mains i ensured that i have the right content i had the right structure in mind uh -huh. and i and i worked on my speed i think the the one thing that i really needed to work was on my speed Uh, so over the course of those twelve papers, while also trying to improve my content, mm -hmm. I was more focused on speed. So, last, the only round that is left is the personal interview right. uh, round. So if you could share a little bit about how was your experience? Right. Maybe if you remember, how were the type of questions that you were asked? Yeah. Uh, was it more based on uh, knowledge, or more about you, or right. more from your optional or your work background? Correct. What was it? So the good thing about interview is that uh, that's the only place where you have some sort of control. Mm -hmm. like, that's the only place. <laughs> not in prelims, not in mains, but in interview you get you have a daft that you need to fill up that will be in front of them. And if you make it interesting enough, you can you can make them spend a lot of time on your daft. Okay. Uh, so I think. Uh, Gaurav Agarwal said 2013 so i think i remember his uh, write up on interview uh -huh. where he said that you should uh, be able to present a personality of yourself in the dav so they look at it and they want to ask you questions based on what you have, what you had written so i tried making dav i tried making my dav in that way where uh, i am attracting certain line of questioning since okay. again uh, my part, my my graduation sub, my not my optional subject was psir um i was taking uh, ifs as my first option mm -hmm. so i put my first interest as following under international affairs okay. it's a risky move because now i could basically be asked anything that is happening around the world sure. and they would expect me to know yeah. so again these are the risks that you take so i put it and then i prepared for it also so whatever you write down on your dad you need to know like in and out of it mm -hmm. i was prepared to answer nigeria's election like why is it being hampered at that point okay. that's the level of preparation i did just All because right. i had written it down uh so whatever you write down in your dav just ensure that you know in and out of it whatever you had done extra curriculars or anything else that you might have done you need to you need to prepare for it okay. because they can and they will ask you those questions and you cannot run away you can you, you can obviously say if it's a factual question you can uh -huh. obviously obviously say that you do not know uh -huh. but i do not think that looks good yeah. irrespective of what they might say that they will not judge you on your knowledge uh -huh. i do not believe it to be true uh -huh. they will judge you on your knowledge so you should be prepared for it i think it's okay if you do it once or twice but exactly. not for every question it's not for every question like yeah. for example if i'm writing like following international affairs uh -huh. and if they ask me what's happening in uh, france or germany and uh -huh. if i can't tell them that then yeah. it then Doesn't it's not justify your it's, i mean it's it's not a question of knowledge anymore uh -huh. it's the question of my integrity whether <laughs> i'm writing like if i'm doing the things that i'm writing about yeah Uh, so thankfully because i because i had written certain things so that attracted um, uh, them to it for example my uh, interview actually like the the sets of question were a little broad mm -hmm. uh, but i could 
I could still get like 60% of the questions on international affairs rela related to basically international relations or something India's foreign policy along those lines. Mm -hmm. A small section on my work, uh, the chairperson was interested in my work experience which I was completely fine with because mm -hmm. it kept them off the harder international relation questions maybe that they could have asked me. Okay. Uh, but most of my um, uh, interview questions were along the expected lines. So mm -hmm. there were a few bouncer questions here or there to which I nicely said that I do not know it. Okay. Uh, but other than that, mostly they were on expected lines and uh, it would have not looked good if I couldn't have been able to answer them. Great. So, Dhanan ji, this is all about our whole about the exam. I think you have given a lot of information for all the aspirants. Uh, now, we just quickly move to a fun round which is our It's called the rapid fire round. Uh, where there are very basic questions, nothing difficult like your interview. So, it's very basic mm -hmm. questions and you have answers one word or one line, mein dena hai, not more than that. Okay, okay, I can do that. So, uh, are you ready for your questions? I hope so. Okay, so your first question is, uh, if given an option to either go in uh, to the past or to go into the future, uh, which day would you select? Something in some day in the past or in the future? In the, uh, I'll go past. Okay. And I would specifically, which day? Specifically, uh, okay. Too much, right? This is, <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> I, I, I want to see the fall of uh, the Berlin Wall actually. So, if you have an option to uh, select, uh, you know, any one person in history that you could actually go down and sit and have a cup of tea with and discuss things, who would you want to go back to? Abhimra Ambedkar. If you have an option to choose a superpower for yourself, which one would you like to choose? I would want to be like the Superman. Okay. Like whatever he has, <laughs> okay. he has it all. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Uh, if you were given an option to, uh, you know, uh, go back in the past and meet a 15 year old Dhananjay, yeah. what would be that one tip or one advice you would give him? Do not go with the flow. Okay. It might not work out for you. All right. Uh, because, but I mean, thankfully it did. Uh, mm -hmm. I think um, uh, being the, that kind of person actually helped me become who I am right now. Uh -huh. uh, but I would I actually like tell him Advise to be him more specific to. in life uh, <laughs> here and there. Okay. So, yeah. Great. And uh, just like something that we do with all the toppers who come here on our show is yeah. we tag a friend. Okay. So you can also tag anyone else. Jo shayad unhone ye exam clear kiya hoga if you know any of the rank I, holders. I, I know a friend from college actually, uh, okay. Kumar Anurag. He's rank 48. He'll okay. be getting IS this year. Okay. So Kumar, if you're listening to this. Resign from your job. He's actually currently <laughs> in Indian Economic Service. So okay. I think he's just waiting for the allocation to come to be All free right. in life. Okay. So yeah, Great. I'm tagging him. So uh, Kumar, just as uh, you heard, Dhananjay has tagged you. And our team will be very quickly in contact mein rahegi, and we would really like it if you can also come here, share your journey, uh, tell us a bit about your preparation story and help our aspirants with it. So we really look forward to that. So uh, we have something small here, Dhananjay, for you okay. from an academy. Thank you and, so much. And uh, this is here. Okay, thank you Wait, so much. You can just keep it down. Yeah. yeah. Down. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> you can keep it here. I'm, 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 I'm hoping a lot of books. <laughs> well, you would see when you open. Okay. Yeah, Maybe we so can much. have an unboxing video later. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So, uh, this is actually for all the time that you've given here, the kind of information you shared for all aspirants. And for just being here and uh, you know, re we are really happy that you came here because I had a great time talking to you, so uh, getting to know so much about the exam and also, uh, you know, I think you are one of the first person that I've seen who is like so much fun to be with uh, and uh, you know, this exam, although it's like the first attempt mein aapne nikal liya, it's a very big deal for everyone, but you're still so chilled about it. And I think just as you said, go with the flow. I think aapke flow mein hi aap ja rahe ho and it's yeah. being really good. So, how was your experience? Ka kaisa tha? Oh, great actually. Now, if like for example, like wherever I show up uh -huh. on say like uh -huh. events, like not events like this, but for example, uh -huh. like anything UPSC related, uh -huh. I realized this one thing that uh, everyone else's time currently is more valuable than mine. Mine used to be when I was still preparing, uh -huh. but currently like my time is free, <laughs> it's literally like free. Okay. But thank you so much to you guys for actually organizing this <laughs> because it's your time that I'm taking and not the other way around because <laughs> I have too much time on my hand. So I'm, I'm really happy that I could uh, use my time, use my time uh -huh. uh, to be here rather than uh, sitting at home watching Netflix, Strangers. <laughs> Thing, season three, which is not good. So, <laughs> so no, I'm 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 really happy. I'm Thanks. really grateful to be here. And uh, a big shout out to all of you guys, uh, the guys behind the cameras, behind too. the cameras too. <laughs> yeah, Great. this is this is a lot lot fun than I expected. Uh, so yeah, that's nice. Thank you so much. So Dhananjay, I'm sure all our aspirants are also waiting for a final message to all of them. So what would you like to say to all our audience? Uh, f final message. <laughs> all right. Um, I think. Um, Irrespective of who you might listen to, irrespective of who you might want to follow, irrespective of uh, what others keep telling you in this exam, 
the biggest asset that you have to clear this exam is you. Uh, you can take guidance, you can take mentorship, you can take whatever you want. But in the end, uh, when you are preparing for it, it's going to be you and the books. When you're in the examination hall, it's going to be you and the paper. And everywhere along these lines, it's going to be you and the difficulty that you're facing. So you have to trust yourself. You have to trust yourself to make the right decisions. And uh, you have to take some right decisions also along the way. Uh, but uh, the, my main point being that uh, you cannot depend on anyone else for it. Uh, you can depend for support, you can depend for motivation, you can depend for uh, money, <laughs> you can depend for a lot of things, but that uh, final uh, dependency that you need to clear this exam, uh, it has to be you. It has to come from you, the motivation has to come from you, uh, the effort has to come from you. And finally, when you deliver the result, uh, that's the only thing that will be not for you, that will be for everyone else around you. That is a great note. Uh, the final result that you deliver will be the one which will be for everyone. Yeah. So on that note, we would wrap up this episode today, sure. Dhanjay. Thank I, so as I said before, enjoyed meeting you. Thank you so much for yeah. coming down. And I really wish you all the very best for you, so you know your future. I hope we get to know a lot of good stories about you and you really create that impact, which I'm sure you will. So thank you once again for thank coming. You so much. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thanks. Cut.